let's assert a new project here. So for this reason, I need to go to File, New, Frame. Then here I can specify number of spans. So I'm going to choose three because we have three spans. I'm not going to change anything else here. I just hit OK. And then here you can see we are in general sheet. So there are a few parameters here which we need to define. The first thing is design code. As you can see, there are so many different um, design codes here from Europe, Hong Kong, um, Malaysia, USA, United Kingdom. So in my case, I'm going to choose Australia, AS3600 2018. Then the second parameter is material. So as you can see, again, there are so many different countries that you can choose. So I'm going to choose Australia again to be consistent with my design code. Then for reinforcement type, we have reinforced, bonded, pre-stress, and unbonded, pre-stress. So my case is reinforced because we are designing a reinforced beam. And then for member type, we have a slab and beam. So I'm going to choose beam. Then for panel type, we have internal and external. We are designing internal beam, so I'm going to choose internal. For a strip type, we have four options. We have one-way nominal widths, one-way full widths, two-way and two-way average. Usually these two-way and two-way average are for um, a slab design. For beam, we usually go for one-way because it's spanning in one direction. So um, among these two, um, we always choose nominal widths and the reason for that, we can uh, go to the help section and see what's the definition of each one of these. So for this reason, so whenever you want to uh, go to help section for that specific item, you can just um, select that um, item and then hit Control plus H key. And as you can see, there is, um, so it, it jumps to that section. It says uh, for one way nominal bits for beam system, uh, it will design the effective beam to support the full panel load. There is no transfer distribution of moments, self weight and uh, panel loads are calculated for panel bits. Point load are applied to the effective beam. But then when I look at the one-way full uh, widths for beam system, it says not applicable. So this is the reason we, uh, for designing the beams, we always go for one-way nominal widths. Now let's go back to our general section. So, um, so we, we choose a one-way nominal width. The next item is con uh, column stiffness. So as you can see, there are three options here, equivalent column, net column stiffness, and enhanced column stiffness. So we most, uh, in most cases, we choose equivalent column. And the reason for that, there are definitions in the um, wrapped that you can understand the difference. So let's go to the help sec uh, section and see uh, what are these definitions. So again, um, ch uh, I choose that cell and then hit control plus H. So here you can see column stiffness. There are three um, uh, options and there are explanation for each one of them. For equivalent column approach, it says uh, takes into account infinite stiffness of a slab and beam at cut, uh, column interface. And it says this is the default and should be used for most slab and beam in building floor systems. For net column stiffness, uh, it says this is basic column stiffness. We will look at the formula in the theory section. There is no attempt uh, to allow for torsional to rotation of the slab at the beam or effect, of, uh, effect at the slab and beam at column interface. And then the third one is enhanced column stiffness, uh, which is uh, taking into account the infinite stiffness of a slab and beam. And it says um, this option should only be used for concrete portal frame where there is no transfer torsional member. Again, if you want to learn more, you can go to the theory section as re referred here. So it says for uh, the first item, you can go to this section. For net column stiffness, you can go to this one. And then for enhanced column stiffness, you can go to this section. So if you, we just click on here, you can see for equivalent column stiffness in this section, there are so many um, explanations. 
and there are so many details you can go through as you can see um, the torsional constant is considered here and if we just look at the formula um, for this equivalent column stiffness to just get the idea of how this is calculated so this uh, as mentioned here is combining column stiffness with the stiffness of transverse torsional member so column stiffness is simply adding the stiffness of column above and below and then transverse torsional uh, kt is considering the torsional constant and torsional stiffness so the way that this equivalent column stiffness is calculated is by these two formulas so it's basically combining kt with kc here now, if we go to net column stiffness, as you can see, it's just um, basic formula that we have for column stiffness. For example, for rectangular section is this formula and for circular column is this formula. And then if we go to enhanced column stiffness, this is usually um, based on the first method is considering KC, column stiffness above and below that we looked at for the first uh, method. Uh, equivalent column stiffness so what it does here the stiffness is converted into inertia and then this inertia will be used for frame analysis now uh, let's go back to the general section you've got some idea of what what are the differences between these three options as mentioned we always go for like most cases we go for equivalent column uh, Okay, the next parameter is column uh, concrete type. So concrete type, usually uh, we are using standard concrete. And then concrete expanding member, this is referring to the uh, concrete strength for the slab. So I'm going to choose 40 MPa. You can choose any of these options based on your design requirement. And then concrete strength for column, I'm going to keep it as 40 MPa. Then uh, for this um, top reinforcement cover, bottom reinforcement cover, and top reinforcement access depth limit, and bottom reinforcement access depth limit, it's good to have a look at some basics from the code. So um, if we look at the requirement of the code, so um, for, for example, if we want to look at the definition for bottom reinforcement cover, so this, the definition is bottom face of bottom design reinforcement layer from the outside bottom face of the concrete. So basically, if you are looking at um, this reinforcement here, um, and then we have a tie here, so the cover would be from here to here. So, um, so basically it's looking at the bottom reinforcement, um, so outside uh, surface from the uh, concrete. This is the definition of the cover. So this is for bottom reinforcement. If you're looking at the side from here to here would be uh, again your reinforcement. 